welcome ye to Foundry Groups on National Talk Like Pirate Day. We are thrilled to have you with us, and we trust that the word of the Lord will be like a shield and scabbard on your side, cutting the enemy unto ribbons as he sees fit. Now, as we join in today, we'll be talking about Mary Martha, a woman from Proverbs 31. Join us as we have a moment of silence and prepare ourselves. National Pirates Day for groups. We are reformed new pirates. We are in the new age. We do not speak of wenches, but welcome ye who might be such. Amen. All right, here we go. We're talking about multitasking today. Um, we're talking about from the feminine perspective. That's why I switched out of pirate talk, because if you say feminine and pirate, it comes out as wench. And apparently that's unacceptable. <laughs> you get in trouble if you use that word. So um, today we're talking multitasking, really three stories. The story of Mary and Martha, the story of the woman in Proverbs 31, and the story of Queen Esther. And here's what we know. With Mary and Martha, there was this, this reality that we saw where Martha was, um, she was really busy doing a lot of things, but it was more about Martha. It was self-centered. It wasn't. It was busyness over engagement, right? Busyness over fullest engagement. And then we have Proverbs 31, who this woman is busy. I mean, she is as busy as it gets. When you read Proverbs 31 through the end, you realize how busy she is. But here's the thing this kind of points out to us. Selfishness versus fullest engagement, right? Selfishness. She's not selfish. She's doing things serving others. She's busier than even Martha, but it's not about her It's about the relationships around her and the way she gives glory to God through the life she lives. I really liked how I said that, the way she gives glory to God through how she lives. I like tuck that one away. And then Esther. Um, Queen Esther is our third character. And uh, Queen Esther is this wonderful story out of the Old Testament during the time of King Xerxes where we see the uh, Persian Empire. So the Medo-Persian Empire took over from the Babylonians. Sorry, you get a little history dork here. The Babylonians came and took over Israel. They took over Judah and all that, and they had beaten the Assyrians. Now we have the Medes and the Persians. The Persians have taken over, and King Xerxes is on the throne. He's a well-documented historical king. Did a lot of war. If you ever saw the movie 300 with the Spartans at Thermopylae, the hot gates, that's who was king during that time was Xerxes. And so we understand that during the time of Queen Esther, 127 provinces were in the Persian Empire. It went from India all the way out into the, they were trying to invade and take over Greece at that time. So that's where you get like, you know, 300 and the Spartans and stuff. So it was a huge empire. The Hebrews were a small part of that empire, and they had been um, taken over by Babylon, absorbed into the Persian Empire, and Xerxes and his wife, they have a little spat because he was drinking for 127 days, and um, and she was mad, and he wanted to show everybody how pretty she was. She said no. Boop. He got rid of her, and um, they find a new queen. Esther is brought in. She is an orphaned young lady who is a Jewish exile, so she's living in Persia, I think in Susa, and she's living there, and her uncle Mordecai has raised her. And she is brought to a position of being queen, and there's a plot to kill all the Jews. And really what Mordecai says is, do you think, Esther, you'll be protected because you live in the king's house? Even you will die, and all your family will die. But maybe God has brought you to power for such a time as this. And it really tells us this. We need to look at it and understand the moments we have shouldn't be squandered. Time is the one thing you can't get back. So we need to be purposeful with this. So here's the thing. What is busyness robbing you of fully engaging in life to the full? What busyness is robbing you of fullest engagement in life to the full? What, is, what selfishness is stealing your time? What things do you do that are selfish, ungodly, self-centered things that rob and steal your time? And finally, where has God placed you? God has put you specifically. It's not like God threw us out there like marbles and went, wow, I didn't think he'd end up there. God's not surprised. He put you here for a reason. We need to believe in the character of God, his full perspective, and understand God has placed us for a purpose right here. As you guys go into groups, I'm excited to bounce these questions off you, but also to get you engaged in this because this one hits close to home. This topic is a big deal on how we as a culture are very busy, but we're not fully engaged. Check out questions. (music) 
Hey, kids, how you doing? We're excited to have some questions for you and get you guys discussing with your parents and everybody in the room the answers to these questions. So allow me to read the scripture, and then I'm going to ask the question. From Luke 10, 38 to 42, it says this. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman, a woman, a woman <laughs> all right, sorry, where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, And Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted with the many preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help. Right? Have you ever done that to one of your siblings? You're like, I'm telling mom. I'm serious. Mom. Right? You you can do that. And you, you like telling them. That's what she did. She told on Mary. She's like, Tell her to help me. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but really a few things are needed. Actually, only one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. So here's my two questions. One, Martha was busy preparing the house for Jesus, and yet we are told that Mary chose to do what is better. What do you think we, um, why do you think we read that Mary chose what is better? Why do you think Mary made the better choice? Number two, doing good, good deeds is great. Being nice to people, listening to your parents, and serving at church are all good things. But we need to be careful not just to focus all of our time on doing good deeds. We still need to spend time with Jesus in relationship. So, what are things that we can do in our life to spend more time with Jesus? Is it reading the Bible and listening to his word? Is it going for a walk and listening to the sound of creation? What ways do you try to spend quality time with Jesus? Talk about it with everybody in the room. All right, kids, I hope you had a great time in groups. I hope you get to have a lot of fun with your friends in groups today and enjoy being together. Thanks for taking part in what we do, and uh, hopefully we'll see you Sunday. Maybe it's see you Monday, uh, maybe at West, maybe at Rooster. We'll see you. We hope to see you very, very soon. Have a great night or day, depending on the time of day. This went poorly, didn't it? But it's okay. We're keeping it. Be good. Questions for the grown-ups. What busyness is robbing you from fully engaging in life to the full? What busyness is robbing you of engaging in life to the full? Question number two. Do you trust that God has placed you in a spot that is worthwhile? Look at where you're at right now. God puts you there. You are supposed to make the most of it. Don't let your mission field, your children's lives, your workplace, your school pass you by unnoticed. Do you believe God is at work in everything, even being stuck in an elevator with other strangers? If you guys want to dig deeper, there are other questions on the dig deeper category. I mean, it makes sense. You want to dig deeper, we provide you the opportunity. So there are other questions. Please make use of those. If you guys have time as a group and you want to discuss it, jump right in. So I would like to plug for you the Saturday night venue service. And here's the thing. We are launching Saturday nights as a worship venue. Here's what you'll get. You'll get live worship. You'll have a a campus pastor there who's kind of hosting the service. And then it will be live teaching. It'll be me or another live teacher teaching live every week. It won't be a video-based teaching. And if you're willing and you're at Foundry, Maine on a Sunday morning and you're willing to make a jump missionally to Saturday nights, we would like to encourage you to leap 
Froggy Leap, because we need you guys to be missionally engaged in this. We want you to um, be a part of the launch team, the effort, volunteering, serving, and attending Saturday nights. We want to launch it with about 250 people to make some space in our main space right now, because it's the second week of September, and we are completely out of room. And it's not just space-oriented. We want to make sure that there's plenty of room to welcome visitors on Sunday and Saturday nights, and it feels better when there's more people in the room. So join me on Saturday, me and Phil, who we affectionately call the Red Panda, and um, join us Saturday nights on uh, Saturday nights at live. It's live teaching, live worship, a great chance to connect with community. Please join us. If you're interested, sign up on your connection cards or email us info at foundrychurch.net. Saturday nights, do it. You get to sleep in on Sundays, do it. It's amazing. So the next thing I want to talk with you about is a strategic initiative for our church. Right now, our church is building the new live site. Um, that's, that's not the only thing we're doing, but it is the largest financial step we've ever taken as a church, and we are starting this campaign 100% all in. This is what it means. We want 100% of all all the Foundry Church, if you call this home, I'm talking to you. If this is the church you attend regular, regularly or most often or you consider this your church home, I am speaking to you. And we're asking you to do one thing. We're asking you to pray right now through October 12th and ask God, how much are you asking of me to give missionally towards the finishing of the building project? We are asking the church to help because we cannot finish the building. With current giving and um, the pledges coming in for next, we're just not there yet. And we are calling the church to be 100% all in. This is who I'm talking to. Every child, like birth through people who are in the later stages of life, right? The youngest to the very oldest, we're talking to you and we're saying 100% all in. Now maybe you're like, well dude, I can't give like 10 grand. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking you to pray about it and if God puts it on your heart, then obey. And we're a church that believes in biblical terms, the widow's might, right? The gift of two cents. If you can only give two cents or God says give two cents but you have a million dollars in the bank, hear me clearly, give two cents. We don't want anything God doesn't have for us. Right, But if God tells you to give something, we're asking 100% of the church to go all in. We need you to go all in for us to do what we're supposed to do. I know we're asking for sacrificial giving, but we didn't build a massive thing that is pointless. We're trying to create space. We're trying to not lock the doors on Sunday morning by by time we get there in February. We need you to go 100% all in. So the challenge is this. Pray now. We will all respond. October, um, the weekend of the 13th is what we're saying because we have services um, through different parts of the weekend. But the the weekend of October 13th, we are going to be bringing our gifts in and we're going to see how God's helping us get to the finish line. The reality is this. Without your generosity, we can't do it. So this is an ask for a gift above your regular weekly giving. If you can give to it, if not if you can, if God asks you to give something towards it, we would ask, please be faithful and be obedient in that and hold on to it until the 13th, the weekend of the 13th. That's when we're going to do the collection on all the gifts or even the pledges. You got one of these cards. Take it to the dinner table, talk to your kids, your friends, your family who are part of this church, and invite them to pray and respond faithfully. And we're going to go 100% all in. As God is on mission for this community and the life of this church, we have to partner with him in obedience. We're excited to see what God does when his church goes 100% all in. So it's, it's visitor day at the Foundry. And we're excited to welcome someone who you've heard stories about. Yes, he is real. He's not a mythical griffin from my childhood. Um, I did have an older brother. I do have an older brother. And he's here. So I'd like to introduce to you my older brother. You can call him Lincoln, but what do I call him? Lean. So come on up. This is Lincoln. I'd like to introduce my brother. Anything you'd like to say to groups? I'll just cover you with music. Go for it. Just talk to groups. Hey, groups. How are you guys? It's great to be here finally. I know you have heard a ton about me, and you can probably believe about 90% of it. Um, 
Song? We have been watching the foundry yeah. from a distance, a distance and using social media point? to see what you guys are doing here. And it's been really an amazing far. journey to watch the transformation exactly. in the church and um, the way that the growth is going and, and the job that you all are doing. And uh, my wife and I just got to spend brother. some time uh, last oh, night at 101. Um, we are truly encouraged by what's Stand happening in the way that focus. the church is tying groups into what you guys are doing. And it's so important, so valuable. Um, Eric asked me if I'd say a few things. And, and I just thought that, you know, this was such an appropriate time to talk about groups and how well you guys are doing them. And quite frankly, we're envious. So. Thank you guys. It's really good to meet you, and uh, I'll give it back to Eric. It's good to know that my brother's struggling with one of the seven deadly sins. Envy. Comforting. Oh, thank you for letting Lincoln come and say hi to you. I covered you in song the whole time. I know you did. It was pretty solid. All right, groups, have a great week. Thanks for letting us be a part of your weekly rhythm and your life. Have a great time talking and being together. See you.